are rare earth minerals. Why China has maintained the monopoly not just over production but also the processing from past five decades, and why India, even after having the fifth largest reserves, failed to reach up to its potential. What will this lead up to, and why rare earth minerals have become so important in the modern world we are living? Rare earth mineral is the new oil in the modern world. and this new oil and its control lies in the hands of china and it has wide implications not just for india but also for the global order let us simplify and understand this today hello everyone welcome to vajiram and ravi's simplified my name is shubhangi singh and today we are going to talk about rare earth minerals the monopoly of china over it and how it has wide variety of implications for india as well as for the global order but before we get into the discussion it definitely becomes very important for us to understand that what exactly rare earth minerals are so when we talk about the rare earth minerals we have to understand here that these minerals don't go by their name they are presence they are present in abundance but the problem with them is their concentrations in terms of mineability is very limited and it is less common that is why their reserves have potential to be very valuable wherever they are found and they are also because of the valuability they become very strategic for the given country or the jurisdiction that it has now when we talk about rare earth elements or rare earth minerals hai 17 such minerals which are very critical when we talk about specially in terms of their usage for high technology so when we talk about rare earth elements or rare earth minerals they are nothing but such minerals who have presence in abundance but their mineability is not found common and it is difficult and wherever their reserves are that become of strategic and very high value and at present we have 17 such minerals which are very critical for advanced and high technology and their usage in recent times has exploded because of their use specially in electronics that we have seen and renewable energy as well now if you talk about these minerals then you can see in terms of production and reserves china is the one which tops the list so if we see the list where we have this whole portion if we see a pie chart here then the major production is coming in from china and that is what we will be trying to understand in detail now china has the dominance in terms of global supply if you talk about 1980s it was when china already focused on production as well as mining of rare earth elements it offered subsidies it also offered lax government rules and protected them from environmental law so that this particular industry grows there was a time when china was supplying 90% of global rare earth elements and now it has come down to 60 but it still dominates the processing and if you look at the processing it dominates 90% of the processing and the downstream supply chains that occur apart from that another important fact that we have to understand let us look at this particular graph before we move on to the fact if you see 57.57 that is close to 60% is coming from china the production and the closest production after that is coming from us that stands somewhere around 16% only now this level of production and the reserves that china holds it allows china to control the pricing access as well as the global refining capabilities that exist 
specially for these rare earth elements apart from that another important fact that is associated here that is if we talk about the global supply chain fragility that exist if you talk about one of the biggest economies be it us be it eu they are dependent on china for most of their supply in terms of rare earth elements us is dependent for 80% and eu has the shocking 98% heavy dependence on china for rare earth elements now this also brings us to the fact that china has never failed to use the advantage or leverage that it has in terms of using it in diplomacy as a bargaining chip a recent example that i'll give you as soon as donald trump came in as president for the second term he started with heavy tariffs reciprocal tariffs excessive tariffs on china and china did not only went back for tariffs they also started to zero down on us companies but they also put an export ban they decided to ex ban the exports that they were doing to us especially in terms of rare earth elements and critical minerals and this was not the first time china has used such means for example china restricted its re exports to japan when they had the dispute of shinkaku islands back in 2010 it has always used this leverage against us eu japan and whichever country they are having trade tensions with now another dimension now that we have understood the facts here now another dimension that we need to understand that how rare earth elements are basically a strategic leverage we have and how they affect the global energy geopolitic but before we get in there we need to start with understanding how these REEs are used across the spectrum for different goods for example if we talk about vitrium it finds its use in television industry if we talk about samarium it is used with cobalt magnets and it is used in guided missiles cerium is used in automobiles to reduce the sulfur oxide emission scandium is added to aluminium to form an alloy which is used in sports equipments neodymium is used to make permanent magnets they are used in cell phones cd players computers loudspeakers headphones etc then we have praseodymium which is used in cigarette lighters lanthanum which is used as camera lenses night glasses and it is also presently being used in hybrid car batteries as well now this usage is definitely of some important minerals that i have been mentioning here and which brings us to the fact that rare earth minerals and rare earth elements are basically the modern oil of the present times now because they are vital for industries such as electronics evs defense renewable ai this makes it the modern oil of present time and china uses rees just like middle east uses oil and russia uses gas not just as a resource but as a leverage but as a gain as a bargaining chip at their end now this is something that china has used when you are talking about strategic leverage china does not remain constrained to the resources it it owns but it also goes beyond for example it sources it from african countries for example we have congo south asian countries for example we have myanmar and it is also responsible for their processing so even big countries like australia they send their rare earth elements to china to be processed so even if certain countries do have the production or the reserves but the problem here is they do not have the processing ability so here china is where it knows it has the modern oil and it knows how to process it as well and china sources sources it not just from africa but also latin america and then it controls the refining at home and this is brought through key sea lanes be it through state of malacca 
or Bab Al Mandi. Now you tell me in the comment section where is the location of Strait of Malacca and Bab Al Mandi, and why are they strategically so important? Now this is what highlights the fact that China holds a serious edge in terms of this particular modern technology and the fuel that is associated with it and india is trying to india is trying to counter this serious implication especially for the modern oil that we have through groupings such as quad so exercises near choke points this choke points of is talking about malacca strait or we talk about andaman sea these choke points we have been carrying out exercises naval exercises by quad so that india is to signal that it is a strategic pushback if china is going to use what it has india can also go for the resources it has and it has the strength of such forums at its hand and the processing industry of china will heavily suffer if such choke points are blocked it also facilitates it also ensures that these open sea lanes which are critical for our ee security and it also facilitates containment of china so that so that it is countered well in time and in appropriate measures now that we have understood the leverage now let us get into understanding that where we stand where our country stands in terms of this rare earth elements race so india does have the fifth largest ree reserves mainly we have monazite beach sand which is the highest amount in present in terms of the reserves we are talking but at the same time we import finished ree products high value products from china because we do not have the downstream capabilities which are required now this is what places at us at the backhand this is a situation where we have the raw material but because we are not able to provide the value addition to it which is required we have to give the opportunity of value addition to a different country and here in this context china has to be this country now in terms of ree we see the monopoly of rel india limited and it focuses majorly on thorium extraction which is less value addition material as compared to re other other ree components and we have upstream only strategy which keeps india low in ree value chain now we have to understand that when we are not opening the opportunity for private sector and we are monopolizing it in terms of public sector the value addition proposition remains limited especially because of the focus that we have only on the thorium as of now we need to focus on other rees as well but that would require technology and if we want to advance the technology it will call in for better private participation as well and at this point of time it seems like a missed economic opportunity because no significant private sector role is seen be it in terms of refining or manufacturing and we are losing out on high value products which are coming from these reeds be it evs electronics or batteries so this becomes important for us to understand that we are late in this particular context where india should have begin as early as possible we are still working on the finish of this china began 5 decades earlier in 1980s and it is reaping the dividends for the very same thing now we have to understand that what is going to be the way ahead how are we looking at global cooperation and how india and quad are trying to manage this monopoly and hegemony that stands with china in terms of re so especially partners are coming up to help out in situation especially japan japan has an important role which is helping us in diversification especially after 2010 why 2010 because china placed an export ban on japan 
now japan invested in india and australia so that japan is able to reduce its china dependence now this was not only something for japan it has helped india and it has supported india's mini magnet manufacturing as well as technology transfer which is required for re other than that quad has been strategic about making sure that there is a proper mineral framework in terms of the capabilities that can be enhanced in coming times and the things that need to be protected from china's influence so for that they have a quad strategic mineral framework where they coordinate ree exploration the processing as well as tech sharing with each other as well and india australia have a rare earth corridor which is gradually gaining traction other than that there have been establishment of multilateral supply chains as india has potential because of the reserve that it holds india there is a potential for india to supply to us japan under the quad rare earth framework that we are talking about and it will also boost india's role that it can also emerge as a ree hub in the coming time as an alternative to china now the way forward we talk about is that what should be done in coming time so as to ensure that we are able to become a ree hub the first suggestion here should be the fact that we need to enhance private participation and for that we need a dedicated department for the same a dedicated department for rare earth under the ministry of petroleum and natural gas which petroleum and natural gas which can focus on such projects where we are also using viability gap funding to attract private ree processing units apart from that we also need to establish downstream manufacturing because we have to set up ree magnet and battery units which needs to have a port infrastructure ease other than that white listed reo imports for domestic conversion are very much important strategic reserves and buffer stock need to be maintained for example just like we have petroleum reserves we also need to have elements and rare earth elements reserve and we need to ensure that we maintain ree access especially when there are global supply disruptions that is how we will be an alternative to the present hegemony of china that we see now my question to you is what are your suggestions and how we can make sure that there is better technology especially for realizing the potential that we have in terms of ree and what are the partnerships that we can use for the same now that was all for now thank you so much